there is a pandemic around the world. Things are going to change and I think we're going to be stuck at home for a very long time. This video is going to be different. Not! Actually, it's a great opportunity to start working on your own projects, hobbies, or to build this rotor control car. This uses Arduino and this board that I designed myself from scratch. This is the L298B, which is a lot different from the very popular L298N. This is very easy to use. This has a large heat sink, but I'm going to show you how I did mine. And also I'm going to show you the whole process on how to make this rotor control car. So let's get started. There are many ways to control the speed of a DC motor, especially with the PWM, or pulse width modulation. This is a standard technique to control the speed of a motor or the average voltage of any other load, like this lamp, and Arduino makes it easy. If you want to learn more about PWM, I encourage you to watch a video that I did explaining everything about the PWM signal and how it works. The simplest way to control a DC motor or any other load like this light bulb is with the use of a single MOSFET transistor. The problem with a single MOSFET is that the speed can be only controlled to one direction and not in reverse. To achieve the control in both directions, we will need a H bridge. There is a big variety of the integrated circuits with the H bridge. The most popular one is the L298N. It can be found in modules like this. But let's start simple and use this PCV that I designed myself using just two MOSFET transistors. Having the board on my hand, I'm going to solder all the components to test it. This circuit includes a linear voltage regulator and an optional potentiometer. This potentiometer can be used to control the speed or the power of any load from the board itself. And of course, I'm going to connect the wires that will be connected to the receiver. And because this board is an Arduino shield, I'm going to plug it on top of the Arduino and everything connects beautifully. The first thing I'm going to do is modify the example code called analog input from the Arduino IDE. Once that's done, I upload the code to the Arduino and we test it. And that's the result. But if we want to control all four motors, we need something like a power distribution board. But if your motors don't have these connectors, you can solder them directly into your board. After connecting everything, we're ready to start writing some Arduino code. Remember that we're going to use our ready control to control our car. For this, I'm going to use the pulsing function that will allow us to read the signals from the receiver. After about two hours of trial and error, I finally finished the code, and it works very simple. And this is the result. Driving this car is very similar to driving a tank. With the two joysticks, you drive the speed of each side of the car. For example, if I push the levers forward, the car will go forward. If I push only the right side, it will turn to the left because the right wheels will turn faster. And the opposite for turning in the other direction. A very simple code and PCB designed. It is very fun, but we have one problem. And it's this. We cannot reverse so we get stuck everywhere. And that's when the H-bridge comes into play. The H-bridge is a very clever design using four MOSFET transistors. With that, we can control the speed and direction of a DC motor. And that's when I started designing a new circuit using the L298P instead of the L298N. Both chips work exactly the same, but there are different packages. The L298P is smaller and it's a surface-mounted device. The 8N is a through-hole device. The design process took me a bit of time, but with the help of some schematics that I found on the internet, I finished it without problems. And then it's time to order it from JLCPCB, 
which is also the sponsor of this video. Gel CPCV is one of the biggest names in the industry, specialized in the production of printed circuit boards. I ordered my design using the SMT service, which will provide and assemble the components, and that will save me a lot of time and money. Back to the project, here I have my PCBs. Let's take a look. Our boards are ready to use. The space that you see at the top of the main board is to accommodate an Arduino Nano. So, if you upload the code that I will provide in the description of the video, the Arduino Nano will be already hardwired in this PCB to work seamlessly with this project. So you only have to upload, solder, and you are ready to go. So let's start soldering the respective wires to this board. To fit power to this board, you can use two different set of pads, which are actually the same pads, but in different locations. Use the one that is more convenient for you. And then we're going to prepare our Arduino Nano to put it in place. Yeah. And then we align it to the board using the USB port as a guide. I connect a battery to see if it works correctly, and it does. And then we connect the rest of the wires for the output. And also the wires that will go to the receiver. The only thing is that the signal wires will have to be soldered directly onto the Arduino pins. According to the code, I'm using pins 6 and 11 to read the PWM signals from the receiver. And now the fun part, the code. I found a code on the internet that will help me a lot, but I have to modify it to match my needs. Because we're using a rotor control and not potentiometers, I have to modify it a lot. I spent a couple of hours more modifying it and uploading it to an Arduino Uno testing the code until I had a decent result that I could upload to the Arduino Nano for the RC car. After I did that, let's connect a battery and see what happens. Well, that's happening apparently because the receiver is not connected. But after connecting the receiver, let's see how it goes. And it works beautifully. And as you can see, we have the reverse enabled. So now we can go everywhere without getting stuck. And by the way, one of the advantages of this code is that we can use only one joystick and not two of them. So it's a lot easier to control it. Okay, the first version of the code is okay, but watch what happens when you don't have the receiver connected or the receiver is not sending uh, valid signals. So we turn it on. And it starts going. Sometimes it's once, you see? Sometimes it's one side, sometimes it's the other. It's just random because there is not valid signal going uh, to the Arduino to read. So it starts going. So that's not good. It's not safe. It's not good. So I took a little bit more time to change the code and try to add some fail safe system or something like that. So it doesn't activate whenever there is no valid signal from the receiver. But because I'm not very good at programming, I will leave that to the experts. The code still have that bug, but I could fix it a little bit, although I won't trust it. It's better if you connect your receiver and your radio is turned on. Another fix is that you set up a failsafe in your radio, so your receiver is always turned on and sending valid signals. If you're an expert in Arduino or a programmer in general, take a look at the code and if you can fix it and share your information, it will be very appreciated by the community. But as you can see, it's very fun and it works great. We have a ready control car. One concern that some people will have is that the heat might be a problem in this kind of chips. In the normal module, the popular module, the L298N, we have this um, through hole chip and it comes with this heat sink, this huge heat sink. The only time that I had a problem with the heat of this module is when using it with stepper motors. Now I have tested this design and it gets warm a little bit because these motors don't draw a lot of power. But in case you want to keep this cool, then use uh, another heat sink, put it on top with some paste and some glue maybe, and that should be enough, more than enough. Now the rest of the heat should go through the plate that it's underneath and it will dissipate throughout the whole board. All right guys, I hope you enjoyed and learned from this project a lot. And if you love RC model aircraft, 
general aviation, electronics apply to this hobby or the hobby in general, consider subscribing right there or I can also recommend you a great, great video about gliders that you can watch right here or you can also see this video that it's a recommendation, personalized recommendation for you. And I'll see you in the next project.